Wisconsinize 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin I is at the Milwaukee Public Library. We're interviewing candidates for the 2014 elections. We're interviewing Janelle Branchan. She's a Republican from Menominee Falls. She's running in the 22nd Assembly District. Janelle, welcome to Wisconsin I. Thank you. And just a note, Wisconsin I appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Janelle, um, basic bio of yourself and why are you running? Well, I am the experienced conservative in this race. Um, I have, I'm endorsed by 17 elected officials throughout the district, as well as I'm a business owner, um, mother, wife. I have a degree in finance from UW-Milwaukee. Um, I have, I've been, um, I'm a member of the Republican Party, member of Emanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, I've done charity work in the sense of for Aquinas Academy and also for Emanuel Lutheran, Christ for Africa, I've chaired and co-chaired that work. More importantly, I am currently a Waukesha County Supervisor and I've championed conservative issues. We fought against across the board employee increases, we have fought against a government run health care, and we've run against crony capitalism. So. I am the experienced conservative in this race. What's been the legacy since you're a Waukesha County board member of Act 10? A huge savings for the county, no doubt. Um, Act 10 has really allowed Waukesha County and all the rest of the municipalities to step back and really fix their budgets. There's no doubt that without Act 10, that the taxpayers would be putting up a lot more money uh, going forward. So it, it's just been a real blessing. There's no doubt about that. Let's talk about a K-12 issue. School choice, vouchers. As you know, the current budget expands them statewide. What's your position on vouchers? Because um, the next, if you're elected, you'll be voting on the next budget. Should we keep the 1,000 limit outside the city of Milwaukee and Racine or what? You know, I'm a huge choice fan and I think it's fair for me to tell you that both of my children attend choice schools. So I'm a huge, huge advocate for choice schools, a huge, huge advocate. My children have all the options of uh, accelerated programs and sports programs, and choice schools really push and drive all the rest of the schools in the district to work that much harder. Um, I am proud of the schools in Menominee Falls and Sussex, but choice schools really allow the rest of the schools to work that much harder in a free market system. And I would follow Scott Walker and with when he agreed with him and say that we want every parent to be able to pick the best school for their kids. A related issue on K-12, of course, is Common Core standards. How do you feel about those? You know, I think we can do better than Common Core. Uh, Common Core is probably, when I go door to door, is the number one issue I hear about women. Women are very concerned about it, and they're concerned about three issues. They're concerned that they're going to lose local control, they're concerned that high-performing students will be left by the wayside, and they're also concerned that all students will be left to the lowest common denominator. I think we can do better than Common Core, and I also have to believe that DPI should have done a better job of really explaining Common Core and how it was going to be implemented because people are really in the dark. In your website, in your campaign website, you talk about you want to lower taxes. Which taxes and how would you lower them? Um, the, I think business tax is certainly something that we'd want to go forward. Uh, we, the taxpayers in Wisconsin, quite frankly, have been at a minimally in, increasingly taxes and we just can't go ahead and do that process. Um, certainly not gas tax, um, certainly uh, business tax, and then individuals as well. We need to keep on reducing, we need to be more efficient, and we need to find different ways for um, our employees to work together so that we can make those efficiencies a scale. You, have, you mentioned the gas tax. It's one of the issues in the projected $650 million deficit in the next two-year budget in the Department of Transportation. Would you delay major highway projects? or raise taxes or what, to put, given that shortfall? Well, if, to put things in perspective, it's a $7 billion budget. 
and 3.8 of that comes from gas tax and also comes from license plate fees and, and so forth. The, there's two things that I think we need to talk about. Um, as, a, as an organization, as a group, DOT, maybe now is the time to prioritize and then also to scale back the size of the projects. DOT has taken on a lot of bike paths, a lot of bike widening. I know they're popular, but the truth is they come at a great expense with additional land, additional costs to the projects. So by prioritizing and scaling back to what we need versus what we want may be the best way for us to get that budget in place. Thank you. Uh, question on health care. As you know, Governor Walker and the leaders of the Assembly and Senate told the federal government, thanks for offering to pay if we expand MA benefits, but thanks, but no thanks. Wise decision or unwise? You know, I think we can actually say that it was a, a very good decision. Um, the now, for the first time in the history of the state, or I should say, first time in a long time, all of the individuals that are below the poverty line are covered. And that's a huge, and I, I don't know that the Republican leadership and the governor have gotten credit for that, but just covering those that are the most poor and 100% is a huge statement going forward. And when we start talking about expanding the program, it's a 60-40 split. Mm -hmm. um, right now you're looking at 1.1 persons, 1.1 million people are on the program. Any expansion is gonna come out of the taxpayer's pocket. Okay, um, because it's so timely, I'm asking all candidates, your reaction to Judge Crabb's ruling on same-sex marriage, do you know? Yeah, uh, when did the process come from we the people to I the judge? Uh, I think there's no doubt, I, I am an advocate for um, uh, husband and wife, and there's no doubt that um, the vagueness of this ruling really left 72 clerks having to create rule of law. And that's what I really think we're talking about, rule of law. There's a process if we want to change the Constitution, and having it come from a judge is just not the way to go forward. Okay. Two candidates for attorney general say that first offense drunken driving should be a crime. Do you have a position on that? Um, you know, that's one of those cost benefit fa uh, issues. Um, there's no doubt that first offense OWI and in Wisconsin is treated a little differently. Instead of having a DA, it is done on municipal courts. And municipal courts have given it a pretty, uh, first time OW, first of all, you lose your license. There's a fee, uh, you have to get an AODA counseling, and you certainly lose um, uh, additional points off your license. So that being said, it is treated very seriously. If we were to make it go through judges and a DA, it would really add to the cost. And right now the court system is certainly struggling. A majority of the taxpayers are covering the cost of the court system, so it's a very serious offense. But at this point, having it go through the municipal court system is really cost effective. Uh, as you're aware, uh, whether we should raise the minimum wage is being debated in Washington and Madison. Your position? Um, the minimum wage is basic economics 101. If you add the increase of the labor, it's going to get passed on to the cost of services and cost of individuals. Minimum wage is just, is just that, it's a minimum wage. And it's not meant to be a long-term uh, lifestyle, it's meant to be a starting point and to come up with additional skills. I represent Menominee Falls, and there are good jobs for tool and die, and without the industrial complexes, they pay 15 to $22 an hour. They offer job training. They have a hard time filling those positions. So to say that there aren't good jobs out there for people who are willing to work, I think they just need to maybe f work a little harder to find the right places. Um, uh, is there any issue that uh, is a central part of your campaign that I haven't asked you about and you want to highlight now? You know, I think the big difference between the other candidates and myself is that I have served on the county board, I've served under Health and Human Services, I've served on the executive committee, I've served under judiciary, I've served, served under land use, and I've had the opportunities to really work within government, work with other individuals, be uh, a conservative fighter for the issues that make a difference to taxpayers, and I plan to take that forward to Madison. Thank you very much. Uh, Janelle Branchian of uh, Menominee Falls is a Republican running in the 22nd Assembly District. The primary is August 12th. Janelle, thanks for talking to Wisconsin. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.